Welcome to this training on what's your audience thinking, how to get inside their head. I tell all of my clients that the most important thing we can know is what our audience is thinking. What are the words that they are using to describe their problem? What are they looking for? What have they already tried? We tend as entrepreneurs to come at this from expert status, knowing what they need because we've probably already been there or we understand what they need, but they don't always use the same words that we do. So that's why I've created this training. Your audience is special. I want you to understand that you have to get inside their head to know what their thoughts are about their problem and the solution they're looking for. What are the specific words that they use that are different from the words you might be using? What are they wanting and needing? And what you know they need is likely different from what they think they need. And this is a really important differentiator for most entrepreneurs. Also, what are the outcomes they're looking for? If we don't understand what they want, then we may be missing them. And the best example I have of this is when I left my first business, I was an entrepreneur who was burned out, stressed out, and I always said, I feel a little dead inside. That's what I felt at the end of my first business. And so I wanted to help other women entrepreneurs kind of avoid the problems that I had had in my first business. And I really knew that I could help them. But the words I were using, stressed out, burned out, they were all words that my real audience, when I did my target market research, which is what I'm gonna teach you how to do today, the words they were using were um, scattered, frazzled, overwhelmed, distracted. They didn't use words like stressed out and burned out. So if I had not done what I'm gonna teach you today and done the exact strategy that I'm going to share with you, then I would have completely missed the entire audience and I never would have gotten my business off the ground. So it's really important to get into their heads and the best way to do this is through interviews. I'm calling them target market interviews, you can call it ideal client interviews, but basically you want to get into their noggin so that you can speak clearly and learn about what they need. You want them nodding when you're talking about their problem. So the reason that interviews are so wonderful is that they give you high quality, first-hand marketing material because you're going to sit down with people and learn the exact words and phrases that they use to talk about their issues. And they're also going to share with you specific examples, things that have worked for them, things that haven't worked for them, what they've wished for, what have happened to them. And while you're listening to them, you're going to be thinking about, oh my God, I can create this offer for this person because I now know exactly what they need, what they want, what hasn't worked in the past and what they're looking for. Also, when you sit down to do face-to-face -face or voice-on-voice -voice interviews with people, you get new potential clients or raving fans. Why? Because you're sitting with them and you're listening to them. And I'm gonna teach you exactly how to do it. But the bottom line is you're going to see patterns among your audience members. You're gonna know who you can weed out, what kind of people you don't wanna work with, what kind of people you do wanna work with. These are time consuming, but I'm going to teach you the exact strategy to make it less problematic for you. And I promise you it is worth it. So today I'm going to teach you the best practices. The number one thing is that you want to get as many in-person phone, email, or survey interviews done as possible. The best ones are voice on voice interviews. Why? Because you can hear intonations. If there's a question that you have about something deeper, you can ask the person to tell you more. You can ask them to go deeper. So in person is the number one way that I would suggest it. Phone is another great option or Zoom. Then if you really can't get somebody on the phone and you really want to talk to them, go ahead and email them or go ahead and send a survey with your questions. But I promise you the survey and the email are not as effective as the first two. The second best practice that I promise you're going to want to do is to write everything down because you're gonna be really present with this person and you're gonna be like, oh, I'm gonna remember all this. This is absolute marketing gold. This is the juiciest stuff I've ever heard. This is super helpful. And then of course, life will get lifey after the interview. So you wanna make sure that you write everything down. When I do my target market interviews, I type 
everything that they say because the way they say it is likely going to be some marketing gold for you later on or it's going to help you craft an offer later on. You want to make sure you get the words that they say and the way that they say it. Additionally, it may be uncomfortable for you to do these because you might not like getting on the phone with people. You might feel uncomfortable asking them the questions I'm going to teach you to ask, but I promise you that you'll get very fruitful results. So let's move into what the interview questions are. Now I'm taking you through these 10 interview questions and I know that you can read, I know that you can know, like see what they are, but I want to explore them with you to explain why these interview questions are set up the way they are and what you need to be looking for when you ask them. So the first question is, what's your biggest frustration with fill in the blank? And what you fill in the blank here is, with the problem that you want to solve for. So what's your biggest frustration with your energy level? What's your biggest frustration with your health? What's your biggest frustration with your sleep patterns? What's your biggest frustration with getting your business off the ground? Whatever the problem is you solve for, that's what you put there. A little note here, when I was starting out, there were three different ways that I thought about the problem I solved for. Um, one was, uh, getting the idea out of your head, one was growing your business, and one was leveling up. And I really wanted to know which, which one of those problems resonated with my ideal client. So I actually said, how do you best describe the problem? What's your biggest frustration with growing your business? And do you use these words, these words, or these words? So feel free to play with everything I'm going to share with you today. And I'm going to take you through exactly how I did it and what I have found most helpful. The second question is, what has stopped you from solving this problem already? Obviously, the, the person that you're talking to knows that they have a problem or they wouldn't have agreed to talk to you, right? But they've got something else going on and they might say, well, I haven't had the money, I haven't had the time, I haven't really realized how big of a problem it is, whatever they say. And the, the last two parts of the question here, what are your limiting beliefs or are there other factors? That's something that you have to take into account. Does that feel right for you to ask when you're talking to this particular person? Because some people that you're going to talk to have never heard the term limiting beliefs or they never heard the term, um, you know, some of the coachy kind of terms that we can use. So we want to make sure that when you're asking this question, that it feels good to you and that it feels good for the person that you're also talking to. The third question is what services, products, or programs have you already tried and what's been missing from them? This tells you what has not worked and what has worked for the people that you want to work with. So if they've said, oh, you know, well, yeah, I really have wanted to get in better shape and I've tried gyms and I've tried online memberships and I've tried Peloton, but the thing that's been missing for me is I really need, like my hand held, I really need one-on-one -on -one accountability. If you are a fitness instructor and that's what you're hearing from your people over and over again, maybe developing an online group program isn't the perfect thing. Maybe developing a one-on-one -on -one, um, personal training program is better. You want to hear over and over what people are saying. What are they telling you about what they've already tried and why it hasn't worked? That is a really important question. The next interview question is, what do you really want? What's your deepest desire around this thing? And this is where people will generally go, oh my God, I just want to be happy. I just want to feel excited or whatever it is they want. They just kind of sigh and then they say it to you. And they're really happy that you're asking this question because they usually haven't spent much time exploring this question for themselves, but by giving them the chance to just listen it's, it gives them the chance to kind of open up. And so when you, when you ask them, what do you really want? Explore this with them. Ask them to go there. What is their deepest desire in terms of the problem that you solve for? What do they really want? The next question is kind of on the opposite side of the spectrum, but not exactly. What's your biggest fear? Sometimes the biggest fear for someone is actually achieving the goal. So I had a client who wanted to become a very big speaker, a national speaker. Her deepest desire was to speak on the stage across the country and it was also her biggest fear. So you might find that for people who really want something, they're terrified of it. 
Why is this good news for you? Because it informs what you might serve them in the future in terms of a program or a service or a product. So when my client who, who really, her deepest desire was to be a public speaker and have a big stage, the biggest fear was, well, what if I have to leave my family to do this? What if I can't have them with me? Who will take care of my family? Um, so you have to understand these things can go hand in hand. The next question, number six, is what's important to you in solving this? You know, what do you consider in potential solutions? Why is this important? Because people are going to tell you, well, it's really important to me that it doesn't take too long. It really, it's really important to me that it doesn't cost uh, more than this much money. It's really important to me that I have someone along the journey with me. This is important for you because it will help you understand how to craft a potential future offer to serve these people that you're interviewing, this type of person that you're interviewing. What's important in terms of you solving this helps inform everything else that you're going to do after that. So if, if you in your mind were thinking about creating a program uh, that was a, a complete 100% online course and every person you talk to says, you know, I just never want to take another online course again, it might have you thinking a little bit differently about what you're about to offer. Number seven is what three things do you want to accomplish this year that would make you feel amazing about and then you fill in the blank about the thing that they want. So this gets them thinking about the future potential transformation for themselves. This gets them excited. And again, this is where people will generally go, oh my God, it would be just so amazing too. And then they fill in the blank. They've thought about this. It may live deep in the recesses of their mind, but they don't often give it much time or credit in their everyday life. So this question that you're asking is a gift for them. It gets them thinking about their future potential self. Question number eight is a really important question because it shows the person the ripple effects. And it's really going to help you understand how this problem affects their life just beyond the problem. And you don't have to ask them all the aspects. You don't have to say, how does this problem affect your family and your social life and your relationships? Choose one or two. Because by this point in the interview, the person will have really kind of let you in and you'll understand what's most important to this person. So how does having this problem affect your social life or your spirituality or your self-esteem or your family? Um, you want to understand the ripple effects because that's going to help you in the future. And again, you want to get down the exact words that they say because your program or your offer or your product or your solution helps beyond this one thing. It's a, it's a ripple effect. And the question that I love to ask here, I'm going to ask it again later, how will life be better when this problem is solved? When you ask that question, they really have a lot to say, and it's such a vital answer for you to, uh, to obtain from them. Question number nine feels like a repeat of question number three. In question three, you asked what services, products, or programs did you already try? This time I'm asking it because by the time you get to question nine in the interview, the person's brain has relaxed. They know that you're just listening. They understand you're not trying to solve their problem for them. You're just taking notes and their brain has kind of opened up. And so maybe there's something they remember that they did that they didn't get to answer when you asked it in question three. So this question is not repetitive. It's actually expansive. This last question is the most important question. It is actually one of the most satisfying questions to ask. How will life be better when this problem is solved? Notice the languaging here. It's very assumptive. How will life be better when this problem is solved? I'm not asking if or how, it's how will it be better? And this question really gets people thinking about their future selves. It, I often get a big sigh here and I get a lot of, um, sometimes I get tears here. And people really want life to be better, but sometimes they haven't had the chance to really think about this. Now, remember, your job in this interview is not to solve or fix or offer any kind of solution. This is not a sales call at all. There is no offer being made. All you're doing is listening. But imagine 10 questions of just 
listening. How awesome that would be for somebody to just have somebody to talk to and all they're doing is receiving that information. That's your job. So this question wraps up the interview and you have a boatload of notes that you can go back to and they have said their words in the exact way that they have come up with examples. They have come up with phrases that maybe you never thought of. They have come up with metaphors that are beautiful. I promise you, if you just receive their words and you take notes, you will have so much good stuff to go from. Frankly, I did my first set of interviews uh, when I started my business and I still go back to them anytime I want to pivot, create a new offer or raise my prices. Now, there may, there may be questions that you have that have come to your mind about your target market that I have not identified here. So are there any questions that you want to replace or add in or remove uh, anything here at all? You have assumptions about your audience. It's your job to clear up those assumptions with the questions. And if any of my questions that I offer here are not helpful, go ahead and remove them. This is yours to, to use as you need. So I'm going to ask you to take action. Reach out to the people on your list. Who are the people you would love to talk to about solving the problem? And if you don't know people personally, and this could be friends, it could be maybe students you had, people you worked with, um, family members, perhaps past clients, somebody who's expressed interest in you. If you don't know somebody and you don't have a list, then you can always go to a Facebook group of people who have this issue or ask people for referrals. And here's some verbiage for you. I'm doing research for a project or my business or a product that I'll be launching in the future. I'd love to ask you questions to help me make sure I'm on the right track. I'm not selling anything. I just want to learn about this from you. Would you be open to chatting with me? It'll take about 35, 45, 60 minutes and just tell people how long it will take. The first, when I started, these, these interviews lasted about 45 minutes and then I got them down to about 30 minutes. You just get better at them and you're not selling anything. Remember, that's the most important thing that you can tell people. All you want is to talk with them and listen to them. So I want you to reflect and consider who can you interview? How can you get their time? And your action items are to make a list of all the people who might fit your ideal client or target market avatar. And if you don't know anyone in this avatar to reach out to people who can help you. And social media is a wonderful resource here. Of course, you may have colleagues, friends, family, and just online research. There are people out there who are willing to talk to you because people love to talk about their problems. Just want to remind you why you're doing this again. Every single thing that you learn that they say, every metaphor that they give you, every example that they give you, every word that you never thought they would use, that is marketing gold for the future. People just really want to be heard. When you sit with them and just listen to them, they are going to dump out their pain points to you. They're going to tell you everything and it becomes a source of really high quality firsthand marketing material for you. And you're going to get the exact words and phrases you, they use to describe their pain points and the results they want. And you're going to be able to say that back to them later on, on your website, in your social media, in your videos, in your offers, everything is going to reflect what they said, not what you think. It'll also give you the opportunity to obtain very specific examples so that you can formulate your future offers or any future plans for yourself. And then everyone you talk to, because you have sat and listened and just heard them because that's what people want is to be heard. They become a potential client or a raving fan. So if you have questions about this, please tag me on Facebook at Jen Liddy coach. There are no stupid questions. I will tell you this is time consuming. People will ask how many people should I interview? I always say as many as you can, because you just can't believe the ab absolute um, gold that you will get from people. At minimum, I would say five to eight people. And again, that voice on voice is a much better option. Good luck and reach out and let me know how you're doing.